As the first rays of sunshine slowly warm the Australian mainland, we find ourselves at the foothills of the border ranges in the far northeast corner of New South Wales, one of the largest remaining subtropical wilderness areas left on planet Earth. Koalas battle for survival in fragmented coastal habitat from far north Queensland into New South Wales and Victoria and across to South Australia and inland to the Granite Belt, approximately 200 kilometres from the coastline. Koala numbers could now be as low as 50 to 60,000 as humanity continues to hijack their territory, bringing not only destruction to vital stands of eucalyptus, but also motor vehicle accidents and senseless attacks, often resulting in death due to irresponsible dog owners. Other threats include chemical sprays used in agriculture, not to mention the millions shot for the fur industry during the 1930s. Of the 700 plus species of eucalyptus, koalas can only digest about a dozen, and usually of that dozen, only around eight species are available in any one area, with a strong preference for three or four of those species. Koalas can become active around mid to late afternoon as the day begins to cool and the sun slowly begins to descend before disappearing. Koalas can also remain active throughout most of the night and are more than comfortable in negotiating their way around in a nocturnal environment. The three to four hours after sunrise are also very usable hours for the koala. The Aboriginal term for koalas means no drink, no water, but in times of drought where the water content of eucalyptus leaves drops too low, after bushfires and certain illnesses, koalas will actively source out water. Koalas are well known for their sleepiness and can spend up to 19 hours a day asleep. While their territories only overlap in New South Wales and Victoria, the only relative of the koala is the wombat. They both share a stocky build, a padded backside and an unusual reverse facing pouch. It encourages the joey to learn how to hang on. Koalas are not the only mammal capable of digesting eucalyptus. The ring-tailed possum and greater glider also feed on eucalyptus leaves. Bushfires are the major threat to koalas and their habitat as far as natural disasters are concerned. Symptoms such as sore eyes and a messy stained behind are indicators of diseases such as chlamydia and wet bottom, as well as many other diseases that lead to a slow and painful death for many koalas. Ear flicking is usually a sign of distress or anxiety. As stated, Koalas possess a padded backside for the countless hours they spend parked on hard branches. The white markings on a koala's backside are unique to each individual koala. As you would expect, koalas are very capable and confident climbers due mainly to the design of their hands and feet. Their hands have two thumbs and three fingers as well as fingerprints. Their feet are stubbed big toe, a double clawed first toe and the other two a single claw. Before mating, the male will often drive a female out onto a thin branch, essentially painting her into a corner. After mating, which could be described as a ferocious affair, the male will have nothing more to do with the female, nor the raising of his joey, and will generally casually make his way back to a preferred feeding tree. At around seven to eight months later, the female's pouch is full and the joey is soon to exit. The joey starts life the size of a jelly bean, blind with no legs and weighing just one gram. Here you can see one of our featured baby koalas, Star, and his little arm protruding from its pouch. Whilst waiting for Star's much anticipated exit from the pouch, not far away, another of our featured male joeys named Sparky has already entered the outside world a week ahead of Star. Here we see some of Sparky's first moments out of the pouch as he takes in his first dose of sunlight. 
Before any baby koala can digest the toxins found in eucalyptus leaves, it must first have access to a liquid-like substance called PAP, which is produced by its mother. PAP passes on a bacteria after it is ingested by the joey, which is necessary for breaking down the toxins found within eucalyptus leaves. Eucalyptus is a koala's sole source of food. After a couple of weeks, Sparky seems to be adjusting well to life on the outside as a front young, safely tucked away by his mother's protective embrace. Although one of Sparky's first lessons may well be staying out of the way of his mother's claws while she is scratching. For a period of a few weeks, Star and his mother have proven to be quite elusive to our camera until on this day he finally decides to reveal himself and poke his head out. Unlike Sparky, Star seems less impressed by the outside world, preferring to stay undercover with his main interest being more sleep. In order to get Star on the move, his mother would often have to give him a nip on the ear, followed by some gentle persuasive bulldozing. Not far from the treetops of the home range of Star and Sparky, a baby girl called Blondie has been located. Blondie's mother has also positioned her in such a way that she has access to small branches that she can easily wrap her tiny paws around, while learning how to devour a single eucalyptus leaf. It sounds easy enough, but for the inexperienced front young, it's quite a challenge. The combination of sitting and hanging on while trying to source out her own leaves can be quite an overwhelming experience for a walnut-sized brain, and they often seem confused and indecisive by their own next move. Front young go through quite a rapid period of growth. Here you can see Smokey, another joey to the area we are filming, becoming quite a load to his mother, and she has little choice but to slippery dip him around as she descends. Smokey is at a transitional stage and before climbing to higher branches to feed, his mother switches Smokey to the position of back young. Meanwhile, Star has been spotted and seems to have moved on to the back young stage. After what seemed a slow and lazy start to life, 
Star seems to have now caught up and feeds confidently from his mother's back and is now looking quite proud of himself. Koalas are able to easily sleep through windy conditions and often they will choose to feed in such conditions as it allows them to access fresh shoots which would normally be out of reach. Even in very strong winds, it's business as usual. On this day, Star and his mother make the most of cooler, overcast conditions and continue to search for food well into the middle of the day. Independence comes very quickly for a male joey and it is inevitable that sometime not too far down the track, Star, like all other young males, will be driven from the home range he grew up in by the alpha male who dominates an 8 km squared range. Once the male joey is considered well versed in all aspects of being an independent koala by his mother, she will actually disappear one day while he sleeps and he will awaken to face the wild world all by himself. Koalas are a solitary mammal and for Star this time is still a little way off and there are still a few lessons in fine tuning his act before this day finally comes around. One clear blue afternoon, Star is having his first lesson in climbing by himself, while his mother hovers over him in readiness to drag him back to safety at the first sight or sound of danger. Lessons such as this are conducted on low branches just a metre or two above the ground, on the off chance of a fall. After a brief rest, Star is summoned to get back on board as the search for some fresh juicy shoots continues. Star pants due to the warm weather before indulging. The following morning, Star is found drinking his mother's milk while she gives herself a much needed scratch. It would seem today will be an all round overview of everything that Star has previously learned. After a quick chew on a stalk and mowing down some new shoots, Mother seems frustrated at Star's cheekiness, which appears to be grinding away at her patience. The idea for today was that Star was to be given a two metre range to practice his independent climbing, but as usual, he takes a bit of encouragement to get moving. Star's lazy approach to education continues to annoy his mother, and she swipes her paws at him repeatedly in order to install some discipline into his brattish behaviour. Eventually he finally gets serious about fine-tuning his horizontal and vertical climbing skills and enjoying the freedom of his newfound two metre range.
Star's habit of attempting to eye gouge his mother fails to impress her. She ignores his newfound cheekiness and has a scratch instead. It works, and Star resumes the task of expanding his climbing skills. Star's milk drinking days are now all but over, as are the days of being comforted by his mother. As are the days of riding on her back. Continuous contact with his mother is now over. The star now sleeps alone. It appears as though Star's mother feels the need to brush up on one of the more difficult koala skills, scratching while sitting on a smooth horizontal branch and they both go through the motions of a variety of different scratching techniques and to Star's credit he seems to be taking it all quite seriously. And paying attention to detail for once. It's the following morning and Star is found in the same tree as the day before, but his mother is gone. When koalas are in their infancy, native predator threats could include the lace monitor, the constricting carpet python, Australia's largest bird of prey, the wedge-tailed eagle. And its major nocturnal threat, the powerful owl. Undoubtedly the greatest danger for the koala exists when they find themselves on the ground. They are extremely vulnerable to attack from introduced canine vermin such as dingoes and wild dogs. Pet dogs figure very highly in death and injury statistics, not to mention motor vehicle accidents. Our two featured baby koalas, Star and Sparky, have both now reached maturity and are living independently in a vast wilderness. Avoiding the alpha male will remain a top priority. It is vital they keep a close eye on the world around them. A week into independence and Star looks very healthy, often returning to the familiar trees he grew up in to feed. and with a newfound spring in his step. He seems unfazed by a light passing shower and enjoys the droplets of water after a hot summer's day.
with a full belly and a yawn, he signs off for the day. Like most adolescent koalas, Star still looks clumsy and awkward at times when climbing, often taking unorthodox paths to reach desired leaves. occasionally tying himself up in a knot. We welcome the return of Sparky to our lens as he is spotted snagging himself before executing a series of energetic leaps that shows koalas are more than capable of short bursts of energy. It's more than a month since Sparky was last spotted, and so we decide to take our camera to the treetops and join him for lunch. Even though we have known Sparky from when he was a tiny joey, we weren't sure how he would react to our climbing his tree and filming him from such close range. As it turned out, he showed no signs of fear towards us. It was as if we weren't even there. Barely 50 metres from where Sparky had set up the shot, Star was happily grinding away on some fresh eucalyptus tips. It was such a relief to see our two baby boys doing so well. With Star now independent, his mother moves freely minus the load. Interesting birds to cross a koala's path include the yellowtail and red-tailed black cockatoo. The sulphur-crested cockatoo, the galah, the king parrot, the red-winged parrot, the eastern rosella, the pale-headed rosella, the rainbow lorikeet, the kookaburra, and the satin bower bird. Mammal associates include the eastern grey kangaroo, the black striped wallaby, the red necked wallaby, the whip tail wallaby, the swamp wallaby, the red necked and red legged paddy melon. the squirrel glider, the sugar glider, the mountain brush-tailed possum and common brush-tailed possum, the northern and southern brown bandicoot, the short-beaked echidna, the platypus, and not forgetting the flying fox. Also reptilians such as eastern water dragons and amphibians like red-eyed tree frogs. The goings on of day-to-day -day life also hold an element of risk for the koala. A misjudged jump climbing out on a branch that clearly won't support a koala's weight and a hasty retreat proves a wise move for this koala.
not to mention a fall from this height would equal certain death. As it is for so many endangered mammals, birds and reptiles worldwide, a looming extinction epidemic is inevitable. Habitat loss is without doubt the major issue. Humanity has literally left koalas hanging on a rope. Every day a battle as they clutch at straws in order to survive. Is Australia really prepared to bid this beautiful animal a permanent goodbye? And if so, how much longer do they have before the final farewell? <laughs>